Jesus, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and have given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done, things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Crown him with many crowns. The Lamb upon His throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns a music but its own. Awake, my soul, and sing of Him who died for thee. And hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. We join in praying, O oh God, our true life, to serve you is freedom, and to know you is unending joy. We worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. Abide with us, reign in us and make this world into a fit habitation 
for your divine majesty. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. reading is written in the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah, verses 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doing, said the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in reading responsibly from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage. The kingdoms shake. God speaks, and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now. Regard the works of the Lord, what desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. shall we go you have the words of eternal life alleluia 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 the holy gospel according to saint luke the 23rd chapter glory to you o lord When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. 
there was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Christ the King Sunday. It's uh, interesting that the appointed lesson for today comes from the Gospel of Luke, the crucifixion, in that we see here Jesus coming into his kingdom. A kingdom has a king, and so that's why it comes together. So let me talk about the thieves here for a minute because it's a curious juxtaposition of the comments from each of them. Thieves often, when you think about it, are not all that bright. If they were better put together, they'd do something other than stealing. A report out of the UK, United Kingdom, um, a robber came into a convenience store with a gun, which is a bad thing already because gun ownership in the UK is not permitted, and was holding up the store, and he said, put the money in the bag. So the clerk obviously put the cash register money in the bag. And then the robber saw behind him the array of liquor, and he said, I want that bottle of scotch. The clerk said, I don't think you're old enough to have liquor. And the robber took out his wallet and showed him his ID. <laughs> a report from the, the, the states here. So two robbers go into a store to make a robbery, and the first one holding a gun said, nobody move. And his partner stepped forward, and he shot him. Again, robbers are not always the sharpest tool in the drawer. Think about that. So it's about robbers and thieves here. The Greek word is thieves. It is a generic word in this context of those who have broken the law sufficiently that they are to be crucified to death, whatever their offense was. And they begin to talk the one on, by the way, we have to get the, the king aspect here. If the king is sitting on a throne, the person sitting on the king's right, that's the mercy seat. That's the person, the, the counselor who whispers in the king's ear, they haven't done enough, let them go. The one on the left is the judgment seat. That's the counselor who said, hang him up, crucify him. So just so you understand, it's reversed as you're looking at me, but it's from the perspective of the king. So the thief on the left, the judgment one, says to Jesus, if you are the king of the Jews, the Messiah, save yourself and us. So he's deriding Jesus for being there with him. It's interesting. Um, I did my counseling training in 19, the summer of 1973 at Slayton Farm School for Girls, Westchester, Pennsylvania. So there were five chaplains that summer there for 450 teenage girls. Let me repeat that. There were five chaplains for 450 hormonal teenage girls. There were three men and two women. I was the only man who lived on campus. Let me repeat that. I was the only man <laughs> who lived on campus with 450 girls. Now, they, lived, they had their own cottages, and they were secure. We had inner-city girls from Philadelphia who had committed violent crime, and we had suburban girls from Erie County, way up in the northwest corner of Pennsylvania, suburban girls whose parents were rich and affluent who ignored the girls and who got into trouble to act out and get attention. 
and both those co populations were in the mix. It's interesting, as we began to interact with um, the folks who had been, it, it was a farm school, so they had some things to do out in the fields. Nothing severe, but just to keep them busy. No one thought they deserved to be there. Even the ones, I would pick me, you know, I'm five feet nothing and then 140 pounds. So they gave me the lockup unit. Thank you very much. These are the girls who are so out of control that they had to be locked up. So I went there the first day, and I'm sort of leaning against the wall. And they let the girls out to sort of congregate. And a big girl walked up and grabbed me and lifted me off my feet and pushed me against the wall. Do you know why I'm here? I'm going, no, why? Attempted murder. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> to a person, they all said, there are people who are worse than me that are not here. I shouldn't be here. And so that's typical if you talk to those who deal with people who are incarcerated for some crime. I didn't do it. You don't understand. There are people who are worse than me. It's denial in many stages. So the thief on the left, the judgment seat, is sort of denying, you know, Jesus, go ahead. If, if you're going to save the world, save yourself and save me too because I don't deserve to be here. I want to have you think for a minute. We all make mistakes. Um, I don't do hellfire and brimstone sermons. Uh, uh, let me repeat that. I did one. My first parish, we had three uh, mature sisters who gossiped, and they just ripped everyone to shreds. And so after I was there, what, Lee, three years, four years, I did a hellfire and brimstone about gossip. Yeah. <laughs> And we had members who had been hurt by the gossip of crying in the pews and saying, thank the good Lord, someone said it out loud. And the one sister was sitting right there in the choir and said, we don't do that. And her niece turned and said, yes, you do. <laughs> we all think we are insulated from God's judgment. We begin our service with a brief order for confession and forgiveness on purpose to remind ourselves we're all sinners. We all miss the target of God's will. We all desperately need God's salvation. Then we have the thief on the right. Apparently he gets it. He's coming. Both of them are coming to the end of their earthly life, and he says... He rebukes the other thief. He said, you know, we get what we deserve. We did it. This man has done nothing wrong. And then the plea of every sinner, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. There's actually a, a liturgy song that some churches do. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Anyone have sung that before? That's the plea of the thief who pleaded for salvation. And Jesus replies, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. There can't be a, a king. A king and a kingdom go together. Christ the king, the one who saves. I'm going to shift gears here just a little bit. David Tillman has a really famous, Dr. Tillman has a, a famous sermon called Malchus's Ear. Who's Malchus, anybody? Bible scholars. The Garden of Gethsemane, the night Jesus was betrayed. Judas comes. He betrays Jesus with a kiss. And there's a crowd of soldiers and others. And there is the servant of Caiaphas, the high priest, whose name is Malchus. Peter draws his sword and strikes Malchus. Apparently there was some pushing and shoving and cuts off Malchus's ear. The sermon from Dr. Tillman is Malchus's ear. 
The point is, think about this. You have to sort of spin this out. What happens the years after these events? Caiaphas was one of the prime movers behind Jesus' arrest and the charges against him, which led to his suffering death, crucifixion. Every time and thereafter, Caiaphas saw his servant Malchus healed ear, he would recall that he was responsible for an innocent man's death. Malchus's ear. In your life, you can't tell me somebody, a mother, a father, a parent, a teacher, a neighbor, a friend, someone became for you, helped you gain that moral core. Some things are right, some things are wrong. These things are okay to do, those things are not okay to do. Be loving, caring, say please and thank you. Anyone remember those words? <laughs> so, Malchus became for Caiaphas that moral core, whether he paid attention to it or not. Jesus saves. We actually had another script, uh, scripture here in our liturgy. Sometimes it runs by pretty quickly, and it was uh, just before the gospel, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Do you know where that comes from? Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 66. Can you remember the letter, the number 666, anybody in the Bible? <laughs> That's a passage where Jesus is talking about, we actually think it's about the Eucharist because he had just finished saying to the scribes, the Pharisees, and his larger group of disciples, my body is true, um, is true flesh and my blood is true drink. Unless you eat of the body and drink of the blood, you have no life in you. John 6, 6, 6, after this, many of his disciples no longer went about with him. Most of his disciples left. And turning to the twelve, he said to the twelve, and you, you, will you also go away? And Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have come to know and believe that you are the Christ, the Messiah of God. So today, for all of us, like the thief on the right who call out for salvation, Jesus calls us into his eternal kingdom that begins today and lasts forever. Christ, the King, for you and for all. God's grace and peace be with you all this day. Amen. the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. O seed of Israel's chosen race, now ransomed from the fall, hail him who saves you by his grace, and crown him Lord of all. Hail him who saves you by his grace, and crown him Lord of all. Hail him, you heir on David's line, whom David, Lord, did call. The God incarnate, man divine, and crown him 
I invite you, those of you who are able to please rise as we profess our faith, the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Reviving God, keep your church active in its mission and ministry. Encourage bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders to risk boldly in their proclamation and fill them with wisdom and endurance for challenging times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renewing God. As the Northern Hemisphere prepares for winter, make us mindful of the ordered beauty of your creation. Teach us to treasure cycles of rest and new life. Help us care for what you have made Lord, in your mercy, we see our prayer. Loving God, accompany all who make sacrifices for the sake of others. Safeguard first responders, active duty military personnel. Grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Healing God. Your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, and hospital personnel in their tireless work. Uphold mental health professionals and all in their care. Make the sun of righteousness shine on all who are sick or in any need, whom we pause to remember you either out loud or in our thoughts at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uniting God, unite this assembly in its shared mission and ministry for the sake of the gospel. Highlight ways we can better work together. Give us patience to work through disagreement. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, you know what this congregation needs in its pastoral care. Give holy discernment to our call committee and to its candidate. Give us mutual understanding, hope for the future, and certainly hope for our lives. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Consoling God, abide with all who grieve for loved ones who have died. Comfort us with the promise of the resurrection and new life with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And once you get settled, we're going to greet one another. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Greet one another. Accept, O Lord, the gifts we bring to place upon your table. We do not worship as we ought, but only as we're able. The vines were planted, seeds were sown, they grew in your good pleasure. What once was called and daily food becomes a holy treasure. We're going to pause for a moment, give Josh a chance to come down to his canter position. We'll need to, need to work out the uh, movements here as we get things going. While he's doing that, I'll invite you to stand and get yourselves ready to go. You can turn and smile at one another while you're doing that. Blessed are you, maker of all things. You, as you have trusted us with all that you have created, now gather our gifts Nourish us with this sacrament. Send us to those who hunger and thirst for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise.
This is my body, broken for you. And as you eat it, remember me. This is my body, broken for you. And as you eat it, remember me. This is my high blood poured out for you, and as you drink it, remember me. This is my high blood poured out for you, and as you drink it, remember me. We thank you for the wine and for the bread, for the life's life you gave and the blood you shed. And we remember your wondrous love. You gave your body, you shed your blood. And we remember your wondrous love. You gave your body, you shed your blood. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ now spreads a table before us. Gather here with the saints of all time and all places.
I invite you to rise now as you may be able. We give you thanks, most gracious God, that you have fed us with the bread of heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. Enliven us to be your body in the world and to serve those who are in need through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lift up your hearts now to receive God's blessing upon your life and upon your day. The God of peace who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. peace. Be a blessing to the world. Thanks be to God.